Hey there, everybody. Welcome to Divine Conversations. My name is Eric. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you're new to the channel, welcome. It is very nice to meet you. And if you're returning, what's up, guys? All right, first things first, let me just get this out of the way. I know my shoulders are wet. My hair is wet. I just got out of the shower. My hair is wet and I'm feeling impatient and I don't want to wait for it to dry. So there you have it. That's why my shoulders are wet. Okay, great. Let's move on. So um, first, okay, so now, <laughs> next, uh, this is a new series of mine that I'm looking on continuing to do called Something You Ought to Know. Um, it's something that I've been, I've been thinking about for a while. It's something that I've been wanting to do for a while. So uh, I'm finding that this moment in time is actually a perfect time for it. The thought behind doing these re this little series here is whenever I feel guided to, whenever I feel like there's a message that needs to go out there, whenever I feel like there's something that somebody needs to know, the message that somebody needs to hear, here we are, something you ought to know. Um, it's not going to be consistent. It's not on a schedule. It's really just whenever the occasion rises and I feel like there's, I don't know, I feel like doing a reading or I feel like somebody has, there's a message out there that needs to be getting out there, then I'll, that's when I'm going to do it. So because it's not, um, there's no set schedule or anything like that, when, w when watching these readings, especially this, this series, pay attention, pay, pay very close attention to the title because the title is going to, if, if that resonates for you, then that means that there's something in this message that you need to hear. If you're reading through it and, you're, and you see the title and you're like, nah, no, I, I think I can do without, without one, then you don't need to watch it. I mean, you're, you're welcome to watch it if you want to, but you don't have to. Okay, so that's what this is. Now, here's the thing. Today, today is Friday, and I did not do morning coffee today for a number of reasons. Um, and if you're new to the channel, morning coffee is a series that I do. It's like a daily reading, Monday through Friday. Today would have been the, uh, I would have done the weekend edition of morning coffee. So it would go from Friday, cover Friday through Sunday. Um, I didn't do that today. Number one, we lost power last night. I'm here in Puerto Rico right now. I'm still on vacation. We lost power last night. Um, it happens every once in a while here for various reasons. Uh, and, we, in, and when I woke up early this morning, um, power was still out. So I was like, Ugh, okay, I, may, I really may not be able to do morning coffee today, or at least not for some time. Power came back on around 6.30 in the morning. Um, so I was like, all right, well, I could still do it, but then I felt into it and I was like, uh, something doesn't feel right today. I'm not really feeling it today. And so when I actually got up, which I woke up much later than normal, um, I really didn't actually start getting out of bed until like around eight o'clock. Um, but I was already, I was already feeling like I didn't want to do morning, co morning, morning coffee. It wasn't a thing to do today. And then when I sat down to really meditate and get into the flow of it, I was like, yeah, I'm not feeling this today. Okay, that's fine. So then I'm going about the rest of the day and it's just, the day is just feeling icky, just icky. And so I was like, oop, this is the perfect time to get a collective message out there um, because it just feels like everything is just kind of falling apart. Now, we are in the middle of this coronavirus um, pandemic. It has been officially uh, labeled a pandemic now. And I'm not trying to read into that. I'm not trying to look into that. Um, but it's just like, it's like a domino effect that I'm watching in my life, in other people's lives. It's just like one by one by one by one by one by one by one pieces are falling apart. Things are falling apart. Um, and so I wanted to come on today or now at this point to do this reading for us to just, just to see what's going on. Um, I don't know what it's gonna, what it's gonna say. I, 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 I'm, the only thing that I wanna do is um, just pull out this message. And it's not even like this message is just going to be for Friday the 13th, because yeah, today's actually Friday the 13th. <laughs> yeah, um, today is Friday the 13th. So it's not necessarily just going to be for Friday the 13th. I'm feeling like, as always, these messages are not only general, but they are, are also timeless. So whenever you're guided to watch this reading and it resonates for you, then that's the message for you at that time, yeah? But I'm feeling specifically that this is definitely gonna be able to resonate for anybody at any moment in their lives, okay? So with that said, um, I guess, yeah, let's get into this here, see what we've got for us today. Hi, spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved. Please just give us whatever it is we need to know right now. Mm -hmm. 
Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, kids, I'm starting with the Energy Oracle deck to see what is in our storyline right now. So let's see. What have we got for the collective? Any of this? Yeah. Any of this five shuffles? Um, and you know, it's funny. I, I, I did say I'm not trying to like look into like this whole coronavirus pandemic and all that, but that word keeps being repeated in my head now. I don't know. We'll see what's going to happen. I'm not coming into this reading with any sort of agenda other than to give us the messages that are meant for us at this moment in time. All right. So let's just see what we've got. So what's going on with the collective here, Spirit? What do you want to tell us? What, should, what do we need to know right now? What do we need to know right now? All right. Okay. Two more cards, please, Spirit. What do we need to know right now? Okay. One more card, please. One more card, please, Spirit. What do we need to know right now? What message do you have for us at this moment? Okay, we got two more cards. Yep. All right, cool. Uh, ooh, bottom of the deck, storm warning. All right. Now, this storm warning card has been coming out a lot for the collective lately, okay? Um, but uh, you know what I feel? <laughs> This really isn't such a, so much of a warning right now as it is just a state of reality. Because let me tell you, y'all, this storm is already here. Now, what is this storm representing? This storm is... Ah, no, this goes here. This storm is helping us... I mean, whether you want to look at it that way or not, it's helping us reshape our reality. Okay, we have the root chakra, we have the sacral chakra, the second chakra, and we have financial constraints here. Um, and the pandemic, I'm hearing, Spirit is saying, the pandemic, this, this, this coronavirus shit that's going on right now is a very much a part of that. Okay? It's helping us to reshape our reality. It's helping us to get down to what's really going on in our lives. Uh, this is necessary. It's, ne it's a necessary shakeup, okay? In terms of financial constraints here, what I'm feeling, what I'm picking up on is there is an energy of um, getting down to the base of the problem and really stirring up the reasons why so many people are in poverty, so many people are in financial constraints, so many people are in dire straits, so many people feel inadequate, feel like they can't live their lives. Um, the strongest thing about this, especially with the second chakra, Archangel Gabriel is, no, I'm sorry, Archangel uh, Ariel. Um, we need to get in tune with our emotions. We need to, uh, to stop pushing away our feelings. We need to stop ignoring our feelings. We need to stop ignoring the feelings, the needs, and the desires of others. And this is putting, us, putting this right in our faces, okay? All of the, <laughs> my shoulders, all of this is just coming up for us to deal with. We can't escape this anymore. Underneath storm warning is the seventh chakra, Archangel Uriel. Higher wisdom, higher knowledge, higher guidance, downloads from the universe, seeing things clearly, seeing the bigger picture, seeing things from a higher perspective. It's pretty crazy, it's pretty ridiculous that it takes such extreme situations to cause us to make a change for the better. But there is very much a cleansing, a clearing, a healing that is happening here through all of this pandemic type energy, okay? The next three cards we have, action, door to spirit, and strategy. So what I'm picking up on here is whatever is happening in your life right now, whatever is crumbling, whatever is falling apart, it's providing you, and it, I, I know it's crazy because some people I feel like as you're listening to this reading and you're listening to me say, this is actually a blessing in disguise. In disguise. This is actually helping you get down to the bottom of the issue so that you can fix it. There are some of you that are saying, how the hell is this helping me fix anything? It's only making things worse. Mm, well, no, not exactly. Things are getting worse so that you will finally make a change. And the door to spirit is open here for you. 
Spirit is opening this door here. Spirit is coming through, causing you to take action. Influencing you to put a strategy together. In for you, influencing you to look at something logically and be like, all right, what the fuck? How are we going to handle this? How are we going to make a change? How are we going to make this right? How are we going to keep this from happening again? In some cases, it's revealing how things have been deceptive, how people have been using others just to get what they want. At the, finally, the last card you hear, have here is the world. Now, in this deck, the world represents seeing the bigger picture. The world is your oyster. Anything is possible, being able to do anything that you want. But also, this is kind of like, uh, if you look at it from the tarot point of view, the world is the very last card of the... Um, of the major arcana. And so uh, what I'm picking up on here, at least specifically for this situation, the world is a completion because that's what the world in the tarot represents, a completion. Starting over. This could even be like a reset button type of energy for you. 11-11. Ha! Um, now, listen. For some of us that are, that, for those of you that are watching this reading quite fairly or quite quickly after it was um, published on YouTube, this could very well represent some energies of like the coronavirus epidemic. epidemic. Again, I am not purposefully trying to get into that situation, but it's coming out, so here it is. Um, now, for others of you that are watching this after the fact, it doesn't necessarily have to be this whole pandemic energy that is that this reading is speaking to. It could be something similar to the, to the frenzy and the craziness of what the pandemic represented for us in that moment. And I'm not saying it's about to end anytime soon. I don't know, I'm not trying to predict that, but I'm trying to make a claim to all of those people that are, that are watching this long after this was posted or published. It, it, just because I'm mentioning the pandemic doesn't mean that it, that has to still be affecting you. Of course it could be, but this could be for anything in your life, okay? But either way, regardless of whatever is happening for you, whatever is being stirred up, whatever is being reshaped in your life, first and second chakra, it is influencing you to make a change, to take some sort of action. Now is the time. And I'm feeling like for somebody out here, it, it, it's the only way you were going to make this change in, or, in, in order for you to do this, you had to be, literally, you had to be forced into it. Storm warning. Now, I'm picking up for some of you, you didn't see this storm coming. But that's not completely true. You were purposefully being naive. You were purposefully keeping yourself in the dark. You were purposefully saying, no, no, I can't see it. I, no, that's not happening. That's not happening. Oh, yeah? What you got to say now that the storm is in your face? Can't hide from it now, can you? Only thing you can do is take action. And there are some of you out there that are looking spirit dead in the eye and saying, how dare you do this to me? And spirit is looking you right back straight up dead in your face, in your eye saying, honey, you did this to yourself. Let's get into the tarot here. I want to start clarifying some stuff. And I guess the first thing we can look at is financial constraints. Why is financial constraints here for this message? One last shuffle. Let's talk about this financial constraints. Let's look a little deeper into this, shall we? Okay. What is financial constraints here, Spirit? Why is financial constraints here? Four of Wands. Why is financial constraints here? Why is financial constraints here? So what I'm getting with the Four of Wands is this is home. This is stability. This is your well-being. This is your livelihood. Page of Swords. Queen of 
Queen of Pentacles is at the bottom of the deck here. What is this Page of Swords? Spirit, what is this Page of Swords with financial constraints on the Four of Wands? Nine of Cups. Strength. Okay. All right. Cool. So I, I think I, I, I'm getting what this is saying here. Strength is at the bottom of the deck now. The Queen of Pentacles was at the bottom of the deck before. Uh, financial constraints is the Four of Wands. The Page of, uh, is clarified by the Four of Wands, the Page of Swords, and the Nine of Cups. And what I'm getting with this energy is like, especially with this Page of Swords, someone needs to break themselves free. Yep. Underneath strength is the Ten of Cups. And underneath the Ten of Cups is the Queen of Swords. Ooh, and the King of Swords. Aha, uh -huh, there it is right there with the Hierophant. Okay, so uh, what, I was, what I've kind of been getting with this financial constraints energy, which is what I'm clarifying right now, right? In terms of this situation that's going on here, whatever this is for you, what, however this is resonating for you, if it does resonate for you, there are external influences that are keeping you from having some sort of ho a st stable home. The establishment, the government, the uh, united forces that work to only preserve themselves and keep others in the dark or um, keep others in poverty. The class system, I guess we could say. And what I'm getting with this page of swords energy here i'm getting there is an there is a need to just be a straight shooter straight talker and just do whatever it is you need to do to get yourself out of this to get yourself to your nine of cups and the reason why i was uh to satisfaction sure but then also to get yourself to also to the ten of cups here now the reason why I was having trouble channeling that is because it's like, well, you know, it's not always that easy to just to just change up, change up your life and and do whatever is necessary for you, especially when you have uh, government or um, officials or uh, uh, institutions standing in your way. OK, that's true here. I guess that's true. But what spirit is saying to you is, look. The only way that you can get yourself out of there is if you have the strength to see things clearly, make an executive decision, and then just call out the bullshit. And what I'm feeling for this is you really just have to call out and cut out the bullshit and just make the moves and stop letting the patriarchy control you. And we don't have the devil here, but I feel it's almost like a devil energy where it's like, You're giving your power away in some ways. But you have the power and the knowledge, what I'm, especially what I'm getting with this queen, king and queen of swords. You have the power and the knowledge to take your power back and to manifest exactly what it is that you want. That's what the king of swords says. It's like, look at things as objectively as possible. Yeah, all right, we see what the establishment is doing here. We hear what the establishment is telling us here. But then we also are starting to see the lies. We're also starting to see the breakdown of that establishment, of the authority of that establishment, of the credibility of that establishment. That's what the King of Swords energy brings you. And then the Queen of Swords energy brings you the ability to just cut it out completely. Take your power back and take your life back. Bring all of this to an end. With the world here, it's like you're, the world is your oyster. You could literally do anything. You can create anything that you want. You can shape your reality in the way that you want it to be. But of course, they don't want you to know that. I want to look at strategy next. Well, actually, what I want to look at is action and strategy combined together. So what is this message here, Spirit, between action and strategy? Why are these here? I mean, think about it. Okay, so let's, even if this is not necessarily resonating with you on the fact of like the, pen, the, the coronavirus pandemic that's, that's happening for us right now, but let's use that as an example. There has been so much misinformation about this virus. 
There has been so much misuse of power and lack of action because what? It was just, uh, it's no big deal. I mean, okay. Some people say it's no big deal. Others people say it's a big deal. And yet now it's just exploding in the United States. And everything is falling apart because of it. So there's an energy in which, who do you trust? What do you do? Do you put your power, do you put your faith in others? Or do you start to handle things for yourself as best you can? I'm not, I'm not asking, I'm not suggesting anybody go out there and be an anarchist and start tearing down the, no, 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 no. Within reason, to the best of your ability, to help the greater good if you can, right? You take your power back. You do what it, you do what it is that you need to do. Instead of giving into the fear of the situation, you sit back, you investigate, you look at, you find the answers for yourself instead of relying on others to provide the answers for you. Because it's not like you can really rely on everything that you're hearing, right? There is so much fear surrounding this situation. It's driving everybody crazy. And it's, just, I mean, literally like dominoes, everything is just falling apart. So what do you do in this situation? or a situation like this. You investigate, you figure it out for yourself, strategy, you take your own action. Right? So why is strategy here, spirit? I mean, I probably just, <laughs> I probably just explained it already, but let's see what else we can get. Between action and strategy. Why are these here for the collective, please, spirit? something flip over no okay well let's see let's see let's see let's see seven of swords is at the bottom of the deck lies deception deceit betrayal The High Priestess, the Two of Pentacles, the Queen of Wands, death. I'm not predicting anyone's going to die. Death is a transformation. And the Queen of Wands energy is the energy that I was picking up on when we were talking about financial constraints with all of this, like this King and Queen of Swords, the Hierophant, Four of Wands, Strength, Ten of Cups, all that stuff. What these people don't want you to know, or whoever this hierophant is, the hierophant represents government, uh, university, law, no, not law, but like um, uh, the patriarchy, established entities, control, conformity, indoctrination, all that kind of stuff, right? What these energies don't want you to know is you are in fact powerful enough to make extreme change in your life. And that's why this energy has come out in reverse. All of this has come out in reverse. Because it's time to take your power back. It's time to be the physical embodiment of the law of attraction, queen of wands. You identify what it is that you want, and then you get into alignment with it, and you sit back and watch it happen. Wisdom of the universe here high priestess creating massive change for yourself death and transformation to bring greater balance two of pentacles to balance out your life to balance out your finances to balance out your physical reality they're saying one more shuffle please okay The tower with justice. Whew. I just heard the establishment really is feeling the pinch on this one, aren't they? 
Yikes. Justice is being served here by the dominoes falling. Piece by piece, everything's just going to fall apart until we get it right in order to reshape our reality from the ground up. Physical being, the root chakra, the essence of your physical being here, your physical manifestation, who you truly are, and your sacral chakra, your emotions, your feeling, what it is you really want, what is really going to be, make you happy, what is really going to be fulfilling for you. This could apply to anything, you guys. But if this is resonating with you on the like whole coronavirus tip, I feel like this is the start. This is a catalyst towards this change and this justice. Okay. Oh boy. I feel like this. <laughs> Never mind. I want to move to. Um, yeah. Let's look at the sacred geometry activation stack. Last shuffle. Okay. So what is being activated here? Or what, what guidance do you have for us, Spirit, in terms of this? What needs to be activated here? What is being activated here? Well, that's interesting. Ugh. Card number 19, Delight. The frequency of delight supports our capacity to create and experience feelings of intense joy and happiness. The more delight we feel, the more delight we evoke in others. You know, this might seem ass backwards, okay? But whatever is shifting for you, however this is resonating for you, it's all in service of helping you be happier, helping you find more delight. And in some situations, some cases that this would be referring to here, the circumstances of that are, of, of what is trying to be cleared up and cleared away for you are so extreme, so firmly rooted that you have to go through an extreme circumstance to clear it out, or at least to be awakened to it enough to clear it out. All right. Card number 16, conception. The frequency of conception invites us to bring our consciousness to our origin, the place where everything in creation begins. It helps us to remember the infinite potential and possibilities of this space and what we can manifest through our own focused awareness and intention. Look at that. But the more these energies, whatever this represents for you here, and for some of you, this could actually be family. I just, I'm picking up on that. But whatever these energies are here, the indoctrination that they bring forward just wants to keep you asleep. Doesn't want you to be aware of the fact that you do have the power. You've always had the power within you the whole time. One more card. One last card, please, Spirit. No, I'm going to let it fall out naturally. One last card, please, Spirit. There it is. Ooh, okay, we have two. At the bottom of the deck is, in fact, number 15, Compassion. The frequency of compassion supports our ability to stand by others without judgment and to be the divine mediator between heaven and earth, spirit and matter, so that unconditional love can flow from source through our heart and into the world. Beautiful. And a lot of what's happening here, what I'm picking up on is um, 
this is helping, whatever this is for you, it's helping to put into focus how we have been la la less than compassionate with each other. It's all, oh, uh, it's, instead of it being a, the fact that we're all in this together, it's every man for themselves. And that is not how we will be able to survive on this planet. We need to come together and make sure that we're doing not only what's right or best for us, but also what's right and best for the greater good of all. Because we all share this planet, we all live in this, on this planet together, why not help each other stay safe and secure? Mm. Excellent, so now we have card number three, solar plexus chakra. So we have all three of the, of the lower chakras here. My shoulder is still wet, good God. Anyway, <laughs> we have all three of the uh, lower chakras here, the root, the sacral, and the solar plexus. The frequency of the solar plexus chakra, the yellow flower of life, supports our sense of self, our personal power, and our willpower, as well as our knowing of who we are and what our contribution is to the whole. This is bringing to the forefront how we have been mistreating ourselves and the rest of the world and the rest of the beings around us. Finally, we have card number 32. Merkaba. The frequency of Merkaba supports our ability to use the consciousness, use our consciousness, excuse me, to traverse into other layers of reality and dimensions. It activates our access to our Akashic uh, inheritance as well. Akashic, I should say. Merging the totality of our experiences into our present to serve our highest purpose. Remembering who we are. All right, guys, I'm gonna leave it there. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. Um, yeah, if you'd like to look into your personal situation, please don't hesitate to email me. All the information is in the description box below. But with that, I love you guys, and I hope you have a great day. Yeah, and I'll see you soon. Mwah! Bye.